That's the New York Giants Sports Talk and Entertainment. Ooh, it's been a fruitful weekend. It's been interesting. The barbecue was going, so that made me happy. The 44 Farm Steaks made me happy. If you ever need something delivered to your house in reference to steaks, 44 Farms out of Texas. Phenomenal. Today we're going to talk about, though, three things that could go incredibly right for the New York Giants. We did a video about three things that could go in horribly wrong, so this is the counterpart. This is part two. But before we get started, I just want to address something really quickly. Yes, I understand another YouTuber was talking trash about me, and he told me that I need to stay in my own lane or I'm going to have to deal with him. Oh my god. You know what, guys? I looked in my pockets and I found zero fucks. Don't really care. You know what? Dean Wormer in Animal House said it best. And I'm going to change the variation of the line. Because it fits better this way. Son, stupid, bald, and fat is no way to go through life. That's all I got to say about that. So let's quickly get into the three things that could go incredibly right for the New York Giants. Now, like I mentioned before, we did a video which were the, th which were, which was the three things that could go horribly wrong for the New York Giants. So we're not going to take a cop out and just reverse those three items and say, well, this is going to happen, this happened. We are going to give you three, or I'm going to give you three new items. Item number one is going to be the defensive line. If the defensive line plays up to its potential, it could be the linchpin of the defense. A lot of people are like, well, it's going to be the secondary, but our secondary is in flux right now. And let's think about this for a second. If we need to control the line of scrimmage and control the run, who is better than Dalvin Tomlinson, Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, and even Austin Johnson? Who is going to be better at maintaining that front presence? Keeping the control of the line of the scrimmage. Of the line of the scrimmage. I am just so excited today that I can't even talk. That's the problem I'm having right now. But these guys are run stoppers. They could potentially be the brick wall on the first level that will help the linebacking core. Because we do have some issues in the linebacking core still. You know, we've improved in the linebacking core, but we still have some deficiencies. But you know what? Those, those deficiencies can be covered up by a strong presence by the front four. And those guys will be able to maintain that line of scrimmage. Now, what we also have to look at, of course, on the defensive line is the pass rush. Yes, we have brought back Mr. Marcus Golden. We have missed you when you were gone for so long. Yes, Marcus is kind of a quasi defensive end linebacker. A lot of his sacks last year came from the defensive end position. So, of course, we want him back in that area again. Can he get to the quarterback? Yes, he can. Is he a systems guy with James Betcher because of the fact that his two best seasons are under Betcher? Don't know. But we're going to wait and see, and we're going to find out. But I do think, I don't know if he's going to get 10 sacks, but if he got 7 sacks, I would be happy. And then we look at the other side of the line. Yes, they say that potentially Leonard Williams could play that line. I'm not seeing Leonard play. I'm not seeing that. I am seeing my old buddy O'Shane Zimenez. You know what? O'Shane was used so poorly by James Betcher, it wasn't even funny. Problem with Mr. Zimenez is his rookie year, if you even watched him going back to Old Dominion, he's only got a few moves. So I think with the proper coaching and the proper techniques, you know, you bring in Mr. Chaos to help him out. I think he will be able to develop a repartee to actually go along with his, you know, he's got so he's got one really strong move, but I really do think he can build up a rhythm and build up different moves that he could use against the offensive line. And I think we're going to try to move him around. I hope they're going to try to move him around a little bit. Yes, he was kind of a, again, he's kind of like a uh, Marcus Golden. He could potentially be a quasi linebacker slash defensive end. I see him more with his hand in the dirt, but I would not be shocked if they moved him around the defensive line, maybe placed him over the center a couple times, kind of trying to create that mismatch. But I'm telling you right now, O'Shane Zimenez, I am still saying seven and a half to eight and a half sacks this year. And I'm going to pull another one out of the sky here. I think that Mr. B.J. Hill is going to have a bounce back year. Oh, yes, I know he had five and a half sacks his first year. And then he only had what? I don't think he had. No, he had any sacks last year. Or maybe he had one. I don't even remember right now because I'm too damn excited. I have a feeling under this new tutelage and being able to get out from underneath Shermer and Betcher, 
we are going to see the renaissance of B.J. Hill. We may not, we may only see him get five and a half sacks like his rookie season because of the fact there are, there is going to be competition on that line. But I really feel that we will see him at least get back to five and a half sacks and play effectively against the run and be able to back up in both the defensive tackle and defensive end position. Mark my words right now. Number two on my list, I think I think they're going to go incredible, or I should say amazing for the New York Giants in 2020. I have a gut feeling about the wide receivers. Yes, I know this is a weak position in regards to depth. I understand that. And I understand the fact that we could potentially be injuries away. But I'm telling you right now, if you're going to be putting Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton on the field together with potentially Evan Ingram. And I'm including Evan Ingram more into the wide receiver position than I am the tight end position because I think that Caden Smith and the guy we got from San Francisco, who's 13, who's 13 feet 4 inches, will man that position well. But I have a feeling we are going to stay healthy this year. I don't know why. I have a feeling that we're going to stay healthy this year at the wide receiver position. I think we're going to get that full season out of Golden Tate. I have hopes that Sterling Shepard is going to stay out of uh, excuse me concussion protocol, and I have a hope again that Darius Slayton is not going to succumb to the sophomore jinx. That you know what happens is teams get 16 weeks worth of footage on someone. They know their tendencies. I I, I just have a feeling that Darius is going to be or he is going to turn into a pro's pro and know how to work the coverages and know how to break the coverages and know how we to read the defense. I really do think that. And I think that Evan Ingram is going to move in at times into the slot and on the outside. I think that Garrett is smart enough to understand that Ingram is a weapon and he's a weapon that should be used and utilized. And I think with two, well, you know, Caden Smith is not the best blocking tight end. He's good, but with a, you know, with a one, with basically, you know, with two fairly good blocking tight ends, well, one really good blocking tight end and one Caden Smith, I have a feeling, and people think I'm picking on Caden Smith. I'm not picking on Caden Smith. But you guys got to remember, you're like, I, I had the comment, well, you, he didn't really drop any passes. He caught 72% of the balls thrown to him. The problem was his catchable ball ratio was 92.3. So that means 20% of the time, he did not catch balls that were catchable, that was deemed catchable. So that's a problem. But he's going to work on it. He was, he was, you know, you're looking at an unrestricted free agent coming in. Excuse me, unrestricted, undrafted free agent coming in. Oh, yeah. And the whole crap about the undrafted free agent fiasco. The moron that created the video forgot one simple thing. I was A, only talking about the Giants. B, only talking about the receiving core. So if the idiot can come back and tell me what wide receivers the Giants have had outside of Victor Cruz that were undrafted free agents that excelled with the Giants for an extended period of time, Please do, but he's more interested. He's more interested. I'm gonna scream and do my rats now. This is what I'm gonna do. If you can't take it, you gotta get out of there. You know what? Shut up. That's all I gotta say about that. But you know what? I think if we move, like I said, we're gonna move around Evan Ingram, and we are going to create those mismatches that we have been looking for Evan Ingram for going on three years now. I have, I have this feeling. I, I just, I just feel it in my heart. That for one season, for Daniel Jones, we are going to stay healthy, and then our receiving core is going to stay in. It's going to stay in place. Now the problem with that is we start pads on Monday, so more likely we're going to get an injury on the wide receiving core. And, <laughs> but you know what? And plus the fact that we really have no depth behind us, and we're not even going to get into that because we're going to leave that completely alone. Number three, and the final thing on our list that I think is going to work out amazingly for the New York Giants is Daniel Jones. I am not predicting a sophomore slump for Daniel Jones. Yes, the league will not be surprised anymore about what Daniel Jones can do because now they have footage on him. They have the game film. And yes, I know he gained the extra eight pounds, so that's just going to make him an all pro. But you know what? I think his maturation right now is going to be second to none. I have a feeling that Garrett and Judge are the right coaches to move him into the next level of his career. 
I did a video that said, you know, if he was in between a certain amount of touchdowns and interceptions, and people were like, well, that's only a couple more, and, you know, touchdowns than he had as a, as, as, as a rookie. Yeah, I think he's going to play 16 games, but like I said, I'm still predicting 27 to 30 touchdowns because of the fact that I don't want to see a drop-off. I want to see consistent play. I will be happy with 27 to 30 touchdowns, you know, anywhere between 12 to 14 interceptions. Why? Because if you can do that, you are showing me consistency from year one. I don't want to see 22 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. You know, Eli, what was Eli rookie second season? 24 and 14, I don't remember off the top of my head. Or 24 and 17, I don't remember off the top of my head. But you know what? I don't, I don't want to see that out of Daniel Jones. I want to see consistent. And what I mean by consistency is I want to see game by game improvement. Daniel Jones, and it was his rookie season, so it was no one's fault. He was up, he was down, he played some great games, then he had some bad throws. There was a lot, you know what, and let's be honest, guys. There was a lot of passes last year with Daniel Jones that should have been intercepted. I mean, there are the Eagle game, I, there, he should have had three picks. He should have had two additional picks in the Washington game. But you know what? I think his maturation is going to be second to none. I think Garrett is going to put him in the place to succeed. I am not a big fan of Dak Prescott, and I think Dak was mainly built off of Ezekiel Elliott and his coaching staff. And I think that with Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones and Jason Garrett, I think we have three guys there that are going to work together as a team to help Daniel Jones not only progress but grow beyond expectations. Because I think he did that already his rookie season. But I also I also get worried that people are going to get him on a little bit if he has a couple bad games. You know, I predicted um, the other day with another gentleman that I could see Daniel Jones being benched in 16. And it, it could still possibly happen. And I'm not talking for an extended period. I'm talking maybe for a game. You know, because of the fact that it is a lot of pressure being the quarterback of the New York Football Giants. That, you know, we have to think about it that way. But you know what? Even if he got benched for a quarter or a half, I still think he is going to be amazing for the New York Giants this year. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you want, you can send us an email at onlinebigblue at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at onlinebigblue1. I always look forward to the messages. I always look forward to the tweets. Um, you know, we... we, we um, you know, Diego Doucette, you know, he was a gentleman that actually reached out to us and we were able to help him out, I hope, a little bit. Um, and like I said, I try to answer as many emails as I can. And if I don't get to you right away, please be patient. You know what? Because there is, you know, like I always tell people, you know, life goes on. And, you know, life has to be done. And doing YouTube videos for the Giants to me is probably like seven on the list. But I enjoy doing it, and I try to get to as much as possible, and I can't wait to, like I said, I love reading some of the, Some of these emails are fantastic. I mean, I wish, I want to do a show one day where I just read the emails, because some of you guys send me some emails that, that the data and the thought process is phenomenal. And like I said, I do enjoy reading them. I may not respond right away, but I do promise you this, I will always respond. And I will always get, you know, like I said, and some of the guys I even I even quote on the air. So, on the air, whatever I'm doing here. So, again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, you can like, you can subscribe, you can ring that bell, you know what that means? That'd be awesome.